Establishing the Kingdom of God in an Expanding World 4. Okay. Now, one of the things, there's some issues I want to talk about about Kingdom of God issues. Now, I consider the Kingdom of Adam and Eve, the Kingdom of Noah, the Kingdom of those who keep the faith in the God of Adam and Eve, the God of Noah, and so forth in the following Torah covenants, and the expressions of a kingdom in Christianity, Islam, and Baha'i, and associated things like the Sabians, who generally follow the God of Adam and Eve and the God of Noah, and the God of John the Baptist, and potentially things like Zoroastrianism, which calls God Ahura Mazda, or the wise Lord, potentially those sorts of inclusions, because they're monotheistic based on God, and it's probably close enough. Those who recognize God probably close enough to recognize God, the sort of God of creation. Now, one of the things I want to say is that they have a right of self-defense and for the right for their kingdom, their, their aspect of the kingdom, their uh, inheritance in the kingdom, their share of the kingdom to be maintained, for their world to be maintained and their society to be maintained and defended. We're not supposed to go around murdering people and killing people and proactively conquering people to wipe them out. You're not supposed to put people to death. It's murder. It's a sin. We put people to death under execution of a death penalty for people who go around murdering people. There's a death penalty for murder. There's not a death penalty for killing people who are killers or vile citizens who are wicked enough to be flooded. God does that. But those who are innocent enough, if you go around killing innocent enough people, you'd suffer the death penalty. So that's understood there. There are grounds of killing a human. But generally, in, in the kingdom of God, we're about peace. And we're about defending our lives. We have a right to self-defense and a right to life. And my doctrine for the kingdom of God in the different divisions is that each aspect of the kingdom has a responsibility to make sure the world defended so the doctrines on things like A&M A &M is an underground network and castles and things like that, recent doctrines, for the purposes of defense, when it's pure enough, the intentions of other aspects of the kingdom of God, the other movements, they're entitled to those doctrines to a certain degree when their motivations are pure and good enough, that they're about defensing, defending themselves, about defense. So th those doctrines are available to the kingdom of God as a whole once, once its motivations and attitudes are decent enough, depending on the movement for, for, at hand. So depending on the branches of Christianity, the denominations, and same with Islam and so forth, if they've got a good enough attitude on being wholesome enough citizens about defending their way of life in the world, then these doctrines apply as, as allowed to be studied and looked at in a more in a heavier level, in a more serious level, they can plumb the depths of those doctrines. Whereas the way God judges the A&M doctrine, the No Havidos Bible doctrine, is that it only goes to other people and other movements sort of shallowly if they don't have enough rights. Rights are very important with God and how much you can afford of, us, of certain information. So if, if you're doing your job correctly enough as a Kingdom of God citizen, you, you get a bit more of the A&M and No High Books, No Havidos Bible. Proper enough in the kingdom of God, you get a bit more. And if you're proper enough just as a human being, whatever your beliefs, if you're a proper enough person, you get entitlements with the A&M. So that's, that's how we go on. the A&M goes about establishing the kingdom of God and the world as it advances through history and generally expands. So I thought I'd address that. Now, one other thing I want to address also is the 666 number of the beast people. There is a 666 culture now present on planet Earth. It's particularly prevalent, 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 I think, in some death metal and heavy metal things, where some people even get weird 666 tattoos and things like that, just to mock it all. They are citizens. They have rights. When they behave themselves lawfully enough, we leave them be. Their beef is with the Book of Revelation and Christianity, not with Noahidism. We recognize them if they do their jobs as citizens correctly enough. They're entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness like anyone else when they obey the rules well enough. So I thought I'd address that.